Hello everybody and welcome to Pasco Laboratories. I'm JP and what do you think the P stands for? Uh, pandemic? Usually, in fact, most days. But today, Dan, P stands for physical science. And not just physical science, but we're gonna be talking specifically today about physics and chemistry. Which one's your favorite, Dan? Well, definitely physics. Well, we'll switch that up then. So we'll be talking about physics and chemistry. Chemistry is my favorite, so that actually works out very well. And what we're going to be talking about today is interesting because over the past couple of PASCO Live sessions, we've been talking a whole bunch about hybrid learning. What can you do at home? What can you do in class? What can I do between the two if I have to send my kids home? And we've been coming up with some really great ideas. And of the ideas that I've been able to share with you, I've been able to show you that you can teach online, at home, in class in three easy steps. You can collect that data and take a video or show one of our videos. Dan's got some great videos out there. In the second step, you share that data and your students are able to get that data. And then in the third step, after they analyze it and give you their feedback, you're able to assess. Three easy steps. You just keep repeating that for online distance learning or hybrid learning. But our kids run into a problem sometimes with step number three they oftentimes need a little bit more content support. They need to understand a concept in a little bit deeper way that can't be conveyed maybe just through the laboratory materials itself. And so we run into a problem. And then the question is, wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't it just be great if I could have a textbook that is connected to the equipment, that's connected to the software, that's connected to the online materials, and put that in one package. Wouldn't it be nice just to have one package that includes everything so that I wouldn't have to go from one resource to another? And the answer is yes, it would be terrific. So terrific, in fact, we're going to show it to you today live here on Pasco Live. We're going to be talking about essential physics and essential chemistry, the two different types of curriculum that we offer that is a complete package. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Dr. J.P. Keener. I'm the former director of STEM from the State Department of Education. I'm working here with folks at Pasco Scientific. And with me today is Mr. Dan Burns. He's a 30-year educator, Dan Burns, ladies and gentlemen. He's a 30-year educator, STEM specialist, and recently recognized as a AAPT scholar. A special round of applause for our studio audience today, everybody working who's here helping us live and standing by to help answer questions we have J.J. Plank, who's a co-author of the textbooks, and Boomer, the mascot here at PASCO, also looking to answer your questions. So a round of applause for them. Any time today that you have a question, you just let us know. Uh, Janet is standing by. She's taking your questions. So is J.J. So is Brett. They can answer your questions. But if you just say, hey, I need to know this, they'll stand up and they will interrupt us live and we will answer those questions for you. And don't panic if you've missed any of these episodes over the past couple of weeks. We have them already archived for you on our website. Just go to training and events and look up PASCO Live and they are right there. So this will be there also. Now, our topic today distance learning, hybrid learning, in-class learning, and the need to, to have a package to do that. Dan, why has this become so important lately? Well, a lot of teachers struggled in that abrupt transition to distance learning, and that's very understandable. But teachers that were using the essential physics and essential chemistry textbooks found that there are a lot of resources that they had access to quickly that helped with distance learning. That's true. In fact, uh, we heard back from our friends out in uh, Fort Lauderdale from Richard Berman, who teaches with Essential Physics, and he said, I would not be able to teach this if it weren't for the resources available in Essential Physics. And that's why we thought, hey, maybe we need to explain this to you guys also and let you know that if you take a look at this, if you like this, and if you follow all the way through to the end, we're going to give you a deal that you won't be able to refuse. But you're not ready yet. We want to show you some of the great things that are available. So, Dan, what would you like to start with? Well, uh, I think one obvious thing are the review problems that are found at the end of every section in each chapter in Essential Physics and Essential Chemistry. Let's take a look at an example. Okay. So on the let's index... Let's go to Chapter 4 here, and let's, let's take a look. Go ahead. We can just click and go right to the end of the section that we've read if we want to uh, do some review. And there are typical review problems you might find anywhere, but after students have answered them, they can test to see if they did it right, and there's a detailed explanation of, of what the answer was. And so even if they're right, they're going to read some other ways of doing the problem, which might help their understanding. 
That's excellent. So any student uh, that, that wants to practice, and this is really kind of like self-assessment, they're able to go in, take a look, assess themselves, and then get the solutions. And we can do that in both physics and in chemistry. But suppose that we don't want them to get those answers right away. Maybe we don't want this to be a self-assessment, but instead we want it to be a bit of a formative assessment. What, what might we be able to offer? Well, there's also the take a quiz feature that's at the end of every section in a chapter. And so students can uh, navigate toward that quickly and click on take a quiz when they're ready, when they've reviewed enough. And that will generate a random set of questions uh, for them to answer. And so I'm just going to click on a random set of answers here. And then when they want to see, hey, did I get this right? They can click on the grade. You and got hey, one I got, right. I got one. Where are the odds? And then they can also look at a detailed explanation of how to do them. And so now maybe they understand the ones they got wrong. And so they can tr take the quiz again and the questions change every time they do that infinite number of times. And then once they've mastered everything, they can do a printout, send it as a PDF to their teacher so the teacher can uh, uh, assess whether they're understanding things. So the, the really nice thing about this, Dan, and what I like is that the, the students can take this one time, they could take it five times, they could take it 10 times, they could take it 100 times if they wanted. But the really interesting thing is that you want your students to submit to you that they got it 100% correct with one attempt, right? Mastery yeah. learning. That, that would be the ideal. Absolutely. And, and so this is one way that the students can reinforce their learning through mastery learning, and one way you, as the teacher, can assess their learning by recognizing that they're turning that into you with one attempt, 100%. But we know our students sometimes need a little bit more detail in understanding things. And, and at home, it's even more difficult because we don't necessarily have all the great laboratory equipment available. So what can we do for them, Dan? Well, you want to have them have experiences where they're manipulating variables and seeing the result with a physical system, but if it's through distance learning, uh, interactives would maybe be the next best thing. Interactives, okay. So let's take a look then. Let's, let's go to your chapter 15 in your book and, and talk to me a little bit about interactives here. Well, they can click on interactives and see the list for each chapter, and in the waves chapter there are three, and so let's take a look at the standing waves one, which is integrated right in with the textbook and so students can start that it runs within their browser and then they can explore and investigate uh, on their own to see what happens when they vary the uh, frequency and the tension in the string uh, and the amplitude and after they get comfortable with using the interactive then you might want to have them do a investigation with it and so that is also included with the textbook on, we're looking at the teacher edition here. And so the teacher can download the student's uh, structured investigation and post that for students. And then now they can open that up and go through and use what they've already learned to investigate something uh, that the teacher is uh, hoping they'll learn about. And of course, in the teacher edition is also an answer key so after the students have completed this, you can quickly assess whether they understood the concepts involved. I love that. And, and of course, anything your book can do, my book can do better. And so I would like to show the exact same kind of philosophy. And I'm going to go to chapter nine in my book, if, if you allow me here. So I want to talk a little bit about the gold foil experiment. It, it's important in chemistry because it's, it's kind of the basis for uh, atomic structure. And you see here, I'm in the student book, and, and I want to show you that the, the entire interactive is embedded in the content. I'm reading, I'm reading, I'm reading, and now I've got the support. So let me go to this interactive, and it is the gold foil experiment, and you see I'm using gold, and I'm going to take a look at what happens when I shoot particles through the gold, and I'm going to be looking at undeflected, partially deflected, and strongly deflected particles, and I hit run, and look at those particles, Dan, and boom, something came back. What happened, Dan? Uh, it looks like they got scattered, but some of them bounced straight back almost. Right, and so that was kind of like the big aha moment. And let's, let's think, well, what would happen if I changed that element? Maybe I want to do something I know I can't do at school or at home. I'm going to change it to, let's say, how about 92, uranium. Let's give that a shot. And what do you think is going to happen now, Dan? Probably more scattering, more bouncing back. 
Yep, and look at that. Look at those deflected particles there. So this whole bouncing back is, is extremely interesting. And in fact, it was the reason that a Nobel Prize was worn, uh, won. Did you know that? Um, actually, I think Rutherford won it uh, for discovering alpha and beta particles. Uh, it's true, and Rutherford was a physicist, but actually uh, it was a Nobel Prize in chemistry. So we really can get along, Dan. We, we can get along and we can actually win awards together. But that's how it looks like in chemistry. Now. That is in detail. That's a, that's a great example. There's lesson plans, there's reinforcement. You can use this right out of the book. Some things don't need that much detail. And, and Dan, why don't you talk to me a little bit about animations and simulations that are in chemistry and physics. Well, there's a lot of cons uh, complex ideas in physics that you want students to be able to visualize. Uh, one is electromagnetic radiation or light, one of the most difficult things to understand in physics. Okay, and well, let's so go as to chapter 22 and let's look at that. So as they're reading about light and how it's generated, electromagnetic radiation, they can click on, uh, go right to the uh, uh, animation about it that shows that when you accelerate a charged particle, it generates electromagnetic radiation. Excellent. And that's exactly how it should look in physics. And, and I want to go back now and say that that's how physics shows it. And I want to show you a little bit about how chemistry shows it. So I'm going to jump back into my book now. Let me jump into chapter three. And I want to talk a little bit about phase changes. And so here I am. I'm in the student book. I'm reading. I'm reading. I have phase changes that I'm talking about. I want to know about that energy. So let me click this simulation. And here, Dan, I've got some molecules. You can see that I'm at a very low temperature in Kelvin, 10 degrees Kelvin. And I'm going to pick something out of this list that I know is a gas even at low temperature. So I pick argon. And let me start increasing the temperature ever so slightly. But watch the molecules. What, watch, watch what happens here. Low temperatures, molecules, and boom, already a gas. So argon's a gas at low temperatures. Do you think lead is also a gas at low temperatures, Dan? No way. Probably not. Let's take a look. So. Same temperature, lead is definitely not a liquid. But now, let me start increasing that temperature. And Dan, do you know the melting point of lead? Well, I don't have to. If I have a simulation, I can investigate and find out for myself. Right, great answer. Let's watch. So my temperature is going up, 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 up. Keep watching, keep watching, keep watching, keep watching, getting close, and there we go. Look at those molecules now we've become a liquid. And what's that temperature? 615. I overshot ever so slightly. The melting point for lead is 600 degrees Kelvin, and I was able to figure that out by using the simulation. So that's just another way that we can bring things back home to our students where they might not be able to do hands-on experiments at home. And I don't, pretty hard to melt lead at home, isn't it? Yeah. Right. So, so this is a great opportunity where we don't have to. But there's more there's more than just that. There's the ability to communicate, tying the content to what it is that we want our students to know. And that has to do with the PowerPoint slides that are embedded in the teacher materials for both essential chemistry and essential physics. Dan, you want me to, you want to tell me about that? Yeah, let's take a look at one from the forces chapter okay. uh, so they can see how high quality these are and detailed. And it's in PowerPoint, so teachers can edit them as they like. Uh, all you do is click on the PPTX link in the teacher version, and you can uh, add things, subtract things. You can see there are assessments built in, lots of great graphics. But what about when your students are at home? How are you going to use this? Well, you can make a screencast and post it for them to watch. Uh, in PowerPoint, you can record an, a presentation. It will record your voice as well and all your clicks and everything. And then you can save it, export it as a video, and post it to YouTube or your LMS, and then students can watch it. And you can also uh, assess that they've watched it because there are student notes that, they, that you can give them that go along with it. So I I, that's great, Dan, because what we're able to do now is we're able to take the content, we're able to use the materials that are already provided, and, and you can turn that into a little movie that you can post online, and folks are actually watching your lecture as if you were doing it in class. Right. I love that. Now, that's great, but I've got something that you don't have, Dan, and I, and I know you're not even remotely jealous. Essential chemistry has the ability to make stoichiometry easy. Jealous? 
I can't even pronounce stoichiometry. And you don't have to because you're a physicist, but we have to because we're chemists and stoichiometry is a very big part of what we do. So let me show you how we can do stoichiometry. I'm in the textbook again, the student textbook, and I'm going to use this equation builder. And Dan, I'm going to use a very simple equation here for water and uh, I'm almost done. So let me add hydrogen to this equation. And it's diatomic, so I'm going to make it H2. The question is, is it balanced? Not sure? Well, no. let's take a look. Yeah, it's not. And I can see here from this picture that the oxygen is definitely not balanced. So I'm going to fix that by adding a number in front of the water. And look what happened. Now my hydrogen is off. But I can fix that by adding a coefficient to the front of hydrogen. And voila, balanced. Now this is only half the problem in chemistry. The other half is understanding this math part that we call the stoichiometric relationships. And here I can see the math. I can even change the math and see what those <clears throat> different numbers look like. But this still doesn't show me how unless I click show me how. I can enter that same number again, 100. And watch Dan, I'm gonna click through the steps. Watch the bottom there. Each step by step, I'm showing you the math that's happening that fills in the table so that my students are learning stoichiometry, how they calculate that, so they can use this as a tutorial on how we can do the calculations, and then you can use it uh, to, to help your students understand this difficult concept. And it's available. It's available within the textbook itself, so your students would have access. You like that? That's great. There's a lot of great stuff. In fact, we've given you so much stuff over the past couple of minutes that I know it's kind of been hard to absorb. This is just like, hey, we've got it and we want you to have it. But I've compiled all of this stuff for you so that when you reflect back, when you take a look back and you want to take a look at this stuff, here's the links in chemistry for the overview, the equation builder, the simulation support that we talked about. I've got that all recorded for you. And these are the links. And Dan, I tell you what, I did the same thing for you. I took all of that stuff we talked about today and we've got much more in detail videos and these are all the links and resources that are available for folks at home also. So all they gotta do is take a look at this. So my question to you, Danny, is what would you pay for a package that, that brings it home to your students like this? What would you pay for Well, that? I know print textbooks are way too expensive and here you even get more. That's so, true, uh, that's true. And, and let's, let me show you. So, so we've got review problems. We have the ability to take the quiz. We have the interactives. We've got the simulations. We've got the slide deck. And in chemistry, we even have the equation builder. And what I'd really like to do, Dan, is give folks a deal. And what kind of deal am I gonna offer? I'm not gonna offer any deal. I'm gonna let Isaac Martin offer it, but I promise you it's a deal you can't refuse. You want this for your students, we wanna get it in your hands. And so Isaac Martin is standing by waiting to give you the deal of a century when it comes to this stuff. And, and even if you're not in the United States, don't panic because we have over 100 partners internationally that are waiting to hear from you that want to put this in your hands. So reach out to us, reach out to Isaac. And if you're reaching out to Isaac, Dan, there's a code word today. The code word is Dan and JP. So if you're reaching out to Isaac and you tell him that Dan and JP sent you, you're going to get a special deal today. So make sure you reach out for that. And something that I need to let our folks know that when you get this deal, we're not going to collect student data. We're not going to roster. That means that this can be used on any device anywhere and any LMS is compatible because all we have to do is send folks the link and put that in our syllabus or on an agenda and our students can access this. So, so very easy, so very cheap, so very affordable that, well, shouldn't say cheap, should I? No, it's, it's actually a very invaluable experience, but at a very good price. And you're gonna get that price if you just tell them that Dan and JP sent you. So I think that's some really great stuff. And you wanna know something else, Dan? Guess where you get to be next week? Um, on vacation? No, not quite. You get to be right here with me again oh. because we've been talking about this distance learning and I keep emphasizing that we want our students to do the same type of analysis at home that we do in the classroom. And the only way we can do that is if we have the software that our students share. So we want to take a minute or two and do the power of analysis. And you're going to help me, Dan. I'm going to do some stuff with chemistry, and, and I'm going to use SparkView. What do you think you're going to get to do? Well, I'll only do it if I get to use Pasco Capstone software. Well, no problem. Then Dan will be doing Pasco Capstone Great. software next week. 
So we'll be here next week showing you that. So ladies and gentlemen, this was a very quick overview of essential chemistry and essential physics and the Dan and JP deal that Isaac is waiting to give you so that you can bring these resources to home, so that you can bring them to your classroom. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact us anytime. We're waiting to hear from you. And as always, we wish you the best of luck, great teaching, and good day. Bye, Dan. Bye, JP.